So you want to make a modded Minecraft server. Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. Specifically, we're going to be making a Forge server. Now, Forge is by far the most popular Minecraft mod loader out there, but if you wanted to make a Fabric server, then there is a link in the description down below on how to do that. So Forge is the most popular Minecraft mod loader, but Fabric is a close second, so we have a guide on that if that's what you're more interested in. But let's go ahead and get our Forge server going. Now, the cool thing about this is you still need to download Forge in order to get a Forge server up and running, and luckily we do have a link to that in the description. But first, I want to make a note. This server is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust. It's not meant for anybody and everybody out there. It's also using your own IP address and your own computer, meaning you need a very good computer in order to run a modded server. Mods are really resource intensive in general, so not only do you need a good computer to run the mods on your computer and play Minecraft, you need an even better system to also be able to run the server at the same time. It's also, like I said, using your own IP address, which means anyone who gets this IP can DDoS you, which kind of means take your internet offline temporarily, as well as figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. So for this reason, we recommend it only being for your friends, your family, people that you trust. But what if you don't have to worry about any of that? You want anybody to be able to get on the server? You don't have to worry about the hardware or anything like that. All you need to worry about is playing Minecraft with the mods. You don't have to worry about running the server as far as hardware goes. And what if you just want better security? Well, that's that's where our sponsor, Apex Minecraft Hosting, comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below to break down .xyc slash Apex to start your very own modded server. You can get it up and running in just a few minutes. You can add your mods to it, and you don't have to worry about hardware. You don't have to worry about the security or anything like that. All you've got to do is install the mods locally and join the server. That is it. So if you want to start a server, check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown .xyz slash Apex to do it without having to do it on your own computer and without having to finish this 20-minute video. Literally, you can probably get it done in under 5-10 minutes at Apex. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and dive on into this. So first things first though, you will need to download Forge as I stated. We have a link in the description down below that will take you here. This is our in-depth guide on getting Forge. Now, this is important no matter what because every single person, you, your friends, anyone who joins this server will need to install Forge locally. That's what this tutorial goes over, but no matter what, you also download the same file in order to install Forge as a server. So we just want to come here and click on this Download Forge button to be taken to Forge's official download page. Once we're here, we want to make sure the 1.19.4 version is selected. It's not, so we want to come to the left-hand side. Make sure we go to 1.19 and then 1.19.4. Once you've got this version selected, we can come under Download Latest here and click on Installer. That will take us off to add focus where stop don't click anything on this page it's lying to you don't click anything on this page whatsoever you just want to sit back and wait about 10 seconds and then after about 10 seconds this gray skip button will appear up here in the top right click that gray skip button that's the only thing that you want to click on this page do not click anything else then forge should begin downloading in the bottom left of google chrome you might need to keep it in the bottom left or save it in the screen on Firefox. It's 100% safe to do that as long as it says Forge is in the title, which ours does. We can now go ahead and minimize our browser. And once we do that, we want to go ahead and move Forge that we downloaded from our downloads folder onto our desktop. So to do that, click the little Windows icon, top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. And yes, this is fully working on Windows 11. Click the uh, downloads folder here, and there it is, Forge 1.19.4. We're going to move that to our desktop. Now, before we do anything else, we actually want to go ahead and create a folder on our desktop. So just right click, create a new folder and you can tell this whatever you want I'm going to title it modded 1.19.4 forge server you can literally title it anything but that's a way that I can remember it so let's go ahead and get this installed to do that just right click on forge click on open with click on Java and click OK but Nick I don't have Java here or my icons look a bit different well in that case you want to go ahead and download and install Java 17 Java 17 is required to run a Minecraft server it's also required to run Minecraft mods so if you're making a modded server you definitely need to get Java 17 this goes over everything you need to know to get Java 17 it's super in-depth now you may also need to run the jar fix and this is gonna take all the jar files and link them back to Java that's gonna fix those icons if the icon was different but do this after getting Java 17 so first get Java 17 then run the jar fix nevertheless we can now go ahead and minimize our browser and we can install our server so to do that again right click on forge click on open with click Java and click OK 
that's going to open up the mod system installer where all we need to do is come in here and click on install server you're going to get this red box that pops up click on the three dots within this red box here then we want to navigate to our desktop and find the folder that we just created 1.19.4 forge server right here click open and boom now that red box goes away if the red box doesn't go away you've selected the wrong folder so you want to make sure that you select a brand new folder that you just created click ok and that's going to download install do everything that it needs to do to get forge and your server installed on your computer now we will need to install forge locally as well so we're going to do that after this is installed as the server but getting the server up and running is kind of or getting the server software and, and and files and everything downloaded is step one so let's go ahead and do that boom successfully downloaded minecraft server and installed 1.19.forge Awesome. Click OK. It's going to close out of that, but we want to reopen that Forge installer. Right click on it, click Open with, click Java, and click OK. Then, this time, just click on Install Client and click OK. It should now download and install Forge. If it doesn't, Minecraft's open, the Minecraft launcher is open, or you've never played 1.19.4 before. Obviously, if that's the case, go play it, come back, and you're good to go. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and once this is finished, click OK, and it will close out of the mod system install for Forge here, and we can delete this Forge installer from our desktop. Now, moving back to working on our server, let's open up this server folder we created. In here, we can see we've got uh, run.bat file, run.sh, user, JVM args, and libraries. What is all this? Well, luckily, it's actually making the Forge server even easier because before you didn't get this run.bat file or any of this stuff you kind of had to create it all yourself but now all you've got to do is just double click on run.bat when you do that it's going to go ahead start downloading as you can see it's doing stuff it's going to fail though as you can see you need to agree to the ela go ahead and press any key to continue and we have this new ela.txt if you double click on that run.bat file and it didn't work you're going to need java 17 right so java 17 again pops up in the case where if you were able to open up forge but you can't use that run.bat file you need to get java 17 but nonetheless we can now go ahead and agree to the eula to do that go ahead and open up the eula.txt file here and make this a little smaller no reason for this uh to be that big and then assuming you do agree to the minecraft eula here which we do we can change eula equals false to eula equals true t-r-u-e exactly if i can spell like that eula equals true all one line no spaces or anything and then click file save now we want to go ahead and close out of the eula.txt and double click on this run.bat file. Now it's going to download, install, it's going to do everything it needs to do to get your server up and running. How do you know your server is going to be up and running? Well, there's a few ways. One, it'll just simply say done over here when it's done. Another way is, well, you're going to see your world pop up. And there it is. Your world is popped up. You can see it is now generating this world here. And uh, once that's completed, it will say done. Now, when you have mods installed, it might not say done after it's completed the world. Your mods may load after that. But for a server with no mods, as you can see here, it says done. So now we can go ahead and stop this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to join your server. Then we're going to show you what you need to do to allow your friends to join your server. And then we'll talk about adding mods. So let's go ahead and get you joined on in. So to do this, we actually want to restart the server. I stopped it there and I realized I shouldn't have. So we want to go ahead and run the server. Just make sure whenever you stop your server, you always type stop over here in the console and hit enter. That's going to properly shut it down. But nevertheless, at this point, we want to go ahead and as you can see, it's actually opening this right here as well. Everything is truly working for this server. But we want to open up Minecraft. Now, every time you play on your server, you need to play with Forge. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to join it. Not only you, but your friends aren't everyone who plays on your server must be running the same version of forge that the server is running on top of that they also need every single mod that you install on your server installed locally in their mods folder as well so as you can see here we go to installations uh, we've got the forge installation right here i'm going to quickly change our resolution on that just so we can uh you know join and it looks good for the video but uh we go ahead and click play on this click play we'll be able to join the server now you can join your server using what's called your local host or local ip address but your friends they can't join using that and your friends actually can't join at all until we port forward which we're going to do here in a second but let's go ahead let this load on up i'll meet you and show you how you can join the server so here we are with minecraft open we can now go ahead and click on multiplayer you might need to proceed through this and then we can go ahead and click either direct connection or add server doesn't really matter we're gonna use direct connection and then once we click direct connection this is actually what we're going to be using as our ip address local 
host, right like so. And then if we click join server, it's going to join us right on into the server. As you can see on the left hand side, we're joining on in. Now we didn't have Forge installed and weren't running Minecraft with Forge and all that stuff. This wouldn't work, but since we do, we're good to go and it's joined us on in. Now, like I said, your friends won't be able to join using the local host. They'll need to join using your public IP address after you've port forwarded. So let's go ahead and do that. By the way, uh, I guess we'll just destroy We'll destroy two blocks here and just kind of stand right here. That way later on when we join in, you'll notice, hey, this is the same server as before. So we can go ahead and disconnect from this server. Also go over here and type stop, right like so, hit enter, and oh, I typed stop twice. Stop once, there we go. And it's gonna shut down the server properly. Now we can press any key to continue. It'll close out of that. We can also close out of Minecraft. You don't have to, I'm just doing that because recording with Minecraft open and stuff can sometimes cause issues. And let's go ahead and port forward. To do this, we're gonna go ahead and open up our command prompt. So click the little Windows icon, top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. Type in CMD, and you'll have this command prompt here. Open this up, and then in here, what you want to do is type IP CON FIG. IP config exactly like that, and hit enter. This thing going to give out tons of information here. We want two pieces of information from this list. So I would go ahead and recommend either writing these down, putting them in like a notepad document. You're gonna need them here in a second. So it is worth uh, is worth taking note of them here. So the IPv4 address is the first thing we need. And that's gonna be located right here. As you can see, it's right here. It's right next to IPv4 address. We're good to go. In our case, that's 192.168.1.15. Yours is probably completely different and that's perfectly normal. That's why we're getting this this way. Instead of me saying, here are the numbers you need. It's not the case. Everyone's is different. So then we want to go ahead and type in our default gateway or figure out our default gateway. We can find that here. Now, if you have two and it's kind of two lines, the first line will most likely be numbers and letters. And then the bottom line under that will be just numbers. We want the one that's just numbers. In my case, that's 192.168.1.1. That may be the same for you. It may not. It really just depends, but that's how you can get it right here. Now we can go ahead and close out of this and let's go ahead and open up our browser. Then we want to open up a brand new tab and then in this brand new tab where you would normally type in, I don't know, youtube.com up here at the top or the breakdown.xyz or something like that, you would simply type in your default gateway, which in our case was 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. That's going to open up a login box. Now, this is what our login box looks like. Yours may be completely different and that's perfectly okay if yours is completely different because every router is different, right? And that's normal. Ours pops in from the top. Yours may be in a nice little GUI. It may pop into the bottom or just pop up as a, well, pop up on screen. But no matter what, you have some sort of a login box. And here you want to enter in your router's username and password, which that's going to be different than your Wi-Fi password. And you can find it here at the link in the description down below. This is a complete guide of different methods to finding your router's password. We recommend starting with red method number one, working your way down all the way to method number five. And uh, in the middle here, you will most likely find it. Most people find it by method three, some by method four. And unfortunately, some people do have to contact their ISP, but that seems very, very rare from what we've seen over the years. So nevertheless, this helps you with everything. Keep in mind, you don't have to port forward with a hosting provider like Apex Minecraft Hosting. Nevertheless, let's go ahead here and move on to port forwarding. So I'm gonna log into my router. I will see you once we've logged in. So here we are logged into our router. Yours is uh, most likely completely different, right? It's a completely different sort of login setup. Uh, throughout this, there might be weird empty blank spaces and things like that. That's because all the information in your router, you don't wanna give out to everybody on the internet. So we will occasionally white out and, and cover up different parts along the way, but nothing that's relevant to this tutorial. Anyway, once we're here, what we're looking for is port forwarding. Now, unfortunately, there's no real standard name for this across routers. Sometimes it's located in a simple port forwarding section. Sometimes it's in advanced, it's in admin. It could be in an advanced and then advanced again section. It could be in apps and gaming. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, or NAT gaming, NAT gaming. Overall, you're looking for port forwarding, somewhere where you can enter a port, enter some IP addresses, and out of that, create a port forward. So for us, that's gonna be in the advanced tab. And then it's gonna be, like I said, it could be in advanced again, and there it is, advanced again. 
and then port forwarding slash port triggering. So this is what it looks like for us. Now, I've already got some stuff uh, done here. I'm going to delete the one that we're going to be looking at today. And actually, I'll do a jump cut and just delete all of these. That way, there's no confusion here. So there we go. All of those ports removed. Yours is probably going to look something like this. There's not going to be anything there. Uh, you may have just a list of empty boxes, right? So it could be some of these similar sections, but they're all just empty all the way down the page. And well, use the first one in that case. Otherwise, you may have to add a port forward, add a custom service in our case, create a port forward, or just click a new port forward button. Now, once you're in your port forward, you're going to have some sort of service name, ID. This is just going to identify what it's for. We're going to type in a Minecraft Java server. It can be anything, just with something that you'll recognize if you ever come back to your port forwards, that's what this was for. Now for your protocol, this is going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. You just want to make sure that both of these are selected. Sometimes you can't select both, and if that's the case, do this twice. Everything else the same, just do it once for TCP and once for UDP. Now for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, so right here we have external port, you're going to enter in the number 25565. So 25565. And then for anything else involving port, we have internal port here. Guess what? It has the word port. We're going to enter in 25565, right? Like so. Now for anything as an internal IP address, an IPv4 address, a local IP address, anything like that, we want to enter in that IPv4 address we found earlier, which is our 192.168.1.15. Now, in some cases, you'll have a list of devices, a drop-down box of all the stuff connected to your internet, and I actually have that here as well, and you can select the device in this list. Right here it is for me, but as you can see, it matches the IP address we found earlier. At this point, though, we can go ahead and click Apply, we can click Save, we can click Create, anything like that, and you're good to go. You have now port forwarded. Now, in order for your friends to be able to join, they'll need to use your public IP address. And in the description down below, we have this, a link to where you can get your public IP. Anywhere you visit online, get your public IP, and we just take it and give it back to you. So here it is, your IP address is. Now for us, all you can see is 43. You can click on this to copy it, by the way, but the reason you can only see 43 is you don't want to give this to anybody and everybody on the internet. You only want to give it to people you trust. You can see some of the information that the people can get from you down here. So we have that obviously blacked out or, or whited out there. So nevertheless, we can go ahead and click to copy that. And then from there, we can go ahead and minimize our browser. Now we can open up Minecraft and start our server. So let's go ahead and start our server by double clicking on that run.bat file. And we're going to open up Minecraft. But again, keep in mind that you need to be using the Forge installation when you play. If you don't use Forge, this does not work. Everyone who joins your server, including your friends, need to use Forge. So go ahead and click play, click play with our Forge installation. And now we'll meet you on the Minecraft main menu to join this server with our public IP. So here we are, our server is started, Minecraft is open, and we can go ahead and click on multiplayer. Click proceed, and again, we can use direct connection. You can also add these servers. You would just enter localhost here, for example. Now, this time though, we're not gonna connect via localhost. We're gonna connect using that public IP address. Can still see the 4.3 here, but the rest of it is covered up because, again, you don't want to give this out. However, you may not be able to do what I'm about to do, which is to join via your public IP. I can do it. If I click join server here, it's going to join us right on in. Look how beautiful that is. But you may not be able to. Why may you not be able to? Well, it's actually pretty simple. By the way, you can see we're exactly where we were before. It's because ISPs don't really like you doing what you're doing right now. Not a bad way. It's just a little weird if you think about it in a networking perspective. You are connecting back to yourself through the basically public internet, right? So your IP address is have, or your ISP is having to re redirect you back to yourself. Some ISPs, mine luckily, allow it no problem. Others do not. So if you can't join via your public IP, it's actually not a big deal. You will just join off of that local host that we joined on earlier. Your friends though will always, 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 always join off of your public IP address. They cannot join any other way. If they do have issues, it might be due to Windows Defender. And luckily in the description down below, we have a complete guide on how to allow Windows Defender through your firewall or how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall in order to basically allow people to join your Minecraft server. So here's our in-depth guide on that. Maybe two years old, but it still works perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, it's helped 
over 250,000 people. Crazy. We've also got this guide, which is uh, how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It goes super in depth. It covers everything. It's 21 minutes of me just troubleshooting different stuff on Minecraft servers, things that could be wrong. And uh, yeah, go check it out. It's super in depth and it talks about modded servers, non modded servers. It's honestly just good to watch. If you do have a server issue in the future, this will help you fix it um, by knowing about what's going on, basically. So there you have it. That is how you can get a Minecraft server up and running with Forge installed on it. Now, how do you add mods? Well, I've got a separate video on that, which is on your screen right now. That goes over everything you need to know. It's also in the description down below. It's how to add mods to a Minecraft server. We're going to be taking this exact Forge server and adding mods to it. We're going to be talking about adding mods locally, things to look out for, how to download mods and make sure they're compatible, all of that stuff. So go check out that video. Again, it's on your screen right now, as well as in the description down below. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible content every single day of the week. My name is Nick, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.